Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar presentation, DevOps for Oracle eBusiness Suite and Cloud, brought to you by Flexagon. Today's presenter is Dan Gert. Dan is the president and co-founder of Flexagon and has been in technology leadership roles for the past 25 years at Flexagon, IBM, and Schneider. His background covers operating system and middleware product development, technology architecture, and software solution delivery. Dan's extensive experience with software automation contributed to the genesis and evolution of Flexagon's innovative and market-leading DevOps solution for enterprise software, FlexDeploy. Without further ado, Dan, take it away. All right, thanks a lot, Rich, and thanks, DZone. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity, and thanks, everybody, for joining here today. Uh, framing things up, we're going to cover some of the challenges uh, associated with uh, DevOps and, and Oracle's e-business suite in the cloud. Uh, we're going to bring things to life with a Flex Deploy uh, overview and then um, spend a lot of time in customer case studies and, and describing the challenges in the solution and demonstrating uh, some capability around that. And then we'll, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, you, you know, back uh, in uh, early 22, uh, we partnered with uh, Pulse QA to conduct a survey of about 100 enterprise tech leaders around the globe, really to better understand the, where companies are struggling in optimizing their DevOps efforts. And two things uh, uh, came up, right? Two top responses were legacy architecture and the complexity of the environment. And so those two combined for 49%, um, so about half of all organizations. Um, but why, you know, why, why is this all so complex? Well, if we take a step back and consider the past two years, right, we know that you know, due to the uh, incredible response by technology teams um, really over the pandemic, the, the, the life cycle of that pan pandemic, the business demand and expectations really intensified. Um, tech teams continue to shift more, more agile, more continuous software development and delivery. Um, you know, adopting new architectures, cloud services, applications, middleware, tools, really to support the entire life cycle from you know, planning, testing, securing, you know, and monitoring. So this expanding tech landscape uh, is really combined with the existing complex systems uh, and, and the, the deeply rooted processes that they just don't go away very quickly. So the tools, um, you know, have been adopted to streamline the development and delivery workflow. Uh, but the challenge is now the organizations struggle to manage and support the, the, the really a non-integrated DevOps tool chain. So um, with that, there's the, uh, the, the final is demonstrating the value, right? How do we demonstrate the value of what we're investing in? And that's very difficult. So siloed teams, um, you know, they need to gather data and provide visualizations really to demonstrate uh, the actual business impact. So beyond the standard DevOps metrics, right? They also need to show evidence on you know, user adoption, increased user productivity, right? Decreasing customer churn, revenue growth, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and well, you know, all that complexity and the challenge leads to Flexagon and to Flex Deploy. Uh, because really that's what we do. So we make it simple for, for organizations like yours to drive the innovation, you know, through quality software, um, you know, helping achieve the greater customer value um, and, you know, at a lower cost point and, and minimizing risk. So, you know, with that said, let's, let's take a look, uh, look at, at how. Flex Deploy uh, is a DevOps platform that was built from the ground up to enable faster uh, software delivery while also improving the, the security, quality, compliance. Um, heavy automation is a focus, as well as tool chain integration, release orchestration, um, and really the bottlenecks um, are removed from the process, increasing time to value um, and, and, and improving the process from end to end. So the platform can be highlighted by a few things. First is build automation. So collecting the source code, packaging it up, versioning it and storing that in the built-in artifact repository. So you can do that either on demand, using continuous integration, 
both are supported. Secondly, deploy automation. So how do we deliver those versioned artifacts into an environment, across environments um, generally? And then release orchestration. So managing and optimizing the continuous delivery and feedback life cycle across test all the way through production. So one of the keys is that Flex Deploy is the only DevOps platform that specializes in reducing the complexity of enterprise software vendors like Oracle, Salesforce, and SAP. Um, you know, we're here today to talk mainly about uh, Oracle eBusiness Suite and the Oracle Cloud, uh, but we do this across the Oracle ecosystem that you'll see in a bit. Flex Deploy uh, provides out of the box plugins and integrations and, and really solutions for a lot of popular tools and technologies. Um, it provides the streamlined uh, experience from end to end, you know, not only the streamlined experience, but the visibility across the value stream. And you know, that in part is why we were able to enable the full ROI in just a few months. Uh, I mentioned the, the broad support for the Oracle ecosystem. Well, here you can see Flexploit has, has support for many traditional uh, technologies, so database and developer tools, middleware, applications, BI, um, and supports uh, just a wide uh, range of Oracle cloud services uh, across the infrastructure, platform, applications, and BI. And we've got lots of customers around the globe, lots of happy customers around the globe that are achieving um, the outcomes and the success uh, that we're gonna talk to in, in more specifics here in a minute with uh, the three examples. Um, before we jump into these uh, customer case studies and the demos, let's review the, the out-of-the-box support that Flexploit provides for eBusiness Suite, SaaS Fusion Apps, and the Integration Cloud. So let's start first with eBusiness Suite. Um, a few things um, as part of a, a very complex um, enterprise application, um, we need to, to, to automate the deployment of 25 or more customizations, right? Objects that, that eBusiness Suite customers are very familiar with, AOLs, Java, SQL, reports, forms, you know, all those sorts of things um, that need to be packaged up and deployed. And we can automate that entire process while also supporting things like the ADOP patching mechanism in 12.2, uh, managing different tiers of the eBusiness Suite uh, application, as well as doing things on the, call it on the periphery that are very common and painful, you know, post-clone refresh, data fix automation, and putting controls around that. Um, and whether you're running on-prem or running eBusiness Suite in the cloud, you know, both are supported, both are very popular. The next is the SaaS Fusion apps. So whether you're using the ERP, HCM, SCM, sales, um, out-of-the-box support to be able to know the details of all of those, um, those applications and manage and automate the, the functional setup migration, right? So there's um, setup tasks and things like scope setups, value sets, fast formulas, things that need to be managed and packaged and, and, and ultimately tested and delivered through a series of environments. Whether FlexPlay reaches directly into the SaaS environment to source the changes, or you're using a source control system like Git, um, both options are supported. And then very importantly, the other capabilities around business intelligence and reporting also is out of the box support. So things like OTBI and BIP. Um, last but not least, we have the Oracle integration cloud. So in the enterprise space, integration is very common, a very common challenge. How do we integrate our custom apps with our, our, our on-prem apps, with our cloud apps, right? How do you integrate these systems to support the business processes? Well, in this case, Oracle's integration cloud is very popular. And the reality is, is it has some complexity associated with it. So how do you get the power of the Oracle integration cloud and deal with the, 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 the challenges associated with managing and, and, and moving things like integrations, connections, lookups, libraries, these different code and configurations that need to be deployed across a series of environments. And then whether you're source controlling in Git or having FlexPlay reach directly into an OIC environment, we support both. And then very importantly, how, how, do, how do we enable the developers to spend their time where they're most productive, right? Developers need to be productive, so 
put them in their studio, let them develop in the studio, and then we have this really seamless browser extension that allows you to drive the, the productivity um, and click and trigger build deploys um, right from their development environment. Um, as well as managing things like config file deployments. And then across all of these, do smart deployment, right? Only deploy things that need to, only things that have changed, utilize resources most effectively. So with that said, we're gonna drive through three examples, um, customer cases with, with Avery Dennis and h and Heath. They're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're all using a lot of Oracle technology, um, but they're different three different threads of going from where they're at today, leveraging legacy and traditional technology and evolving that over a period of time. And in a nutshell, you know, Avery, they're running e-business suite on-prem. They will adopt cloud over time, but that's a little ways down the road. And then in addition to that, they're using Salesforce, okay? H&I, similar from an e-business suite perspective, but a twist they moved all of their Oracle ecosystem, e-business suite and other things onto Oracle Cloud infrastructure, all right? And then while doing that, adopting Oracle Cloud integration, analytics, what you might know as PaaS services, and also staging in the adoption of some of the SaaS Fusion apps and BI, okay? And then the third is a contrast where Heathrow was using e-business suite and they retired that and moved everything to the Oracle SaaS Fusion apps, okay? And when they did that, they also used Oracle integration as well as they had a billing system. It was a crown, crown jewel. And it uh, is a custom built application using Oracle Apex and running on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Okay, so three different uh, cases that we're gonna dig into. First, Avery Dennison. So, these guys um, were undertaking a, an enterprise-wide agile transformation, evolving their technology, standardizing their development and delivery processes. Um, they've been using niche solutions um, and manually connecting their silos together. Right? The negative impact was uh, delivery times, right? lack of visibility to change. Um, they, they really needed to manage that entire change life cycle more effectively. All right. And so Avery had technologies um, in play uh, across a lot of enterprise software vendors. Um, you know, Oracle and Salesforce were their biggest challenges um, due to the complexity of those ecosystems. And then tying everything together with ServiceNow was also uh, you know, very important to them. Um, in part, it, it drove complexity and issues um, with their change management and audits um, when it wasn't an integrated solution. So Avery Dennison, um, runs their Oracle technology on-prem, as I mentioned, and, and will evolve into that cloud um, footprint over time. The result of their implementation was you know, simplified and streamlined development, simplified and streamlined delivery, um, and it included competitive replacements of, of Quest software for the Oracle ecosystem and gear set for the Salesforce uh, ecosystem. The next is H&I, is, who's one of the, the world's largest furniture manufacturers, uh, Fortune 1000 company. They were headed to the cloud, right, moving e-business suite and friends um, to run on Oracle Cloud infrastructure and adopting those new cloud services that I mentioned. Uh, the complexity and inefficiency was incredible, right? They had, they had um, been heavily scripting their processes and plugging that into Jenkins, and that simply wasn't sustainable. Uh, and, and so, uh, in addition to that, H&I was under a lot of pressure to improve their governance of change and uh, security. There were some security concerns that needed to be tied up. Um, they, similar to Avery Dennison, um, you know, had, had a lot of technology. They had disjointed tool chain, was causing productivity and traceability issues. Uh, they had a whole bunch of Oracle and, and, and other enterprise technology that was really complex. Um, for development, deployment, and the operational aspects of this. Um, you know, in addition to running eBiz on OCI, they were moving the middleware, BI, you know, other technology to run on the cloud infrastructure and adopting those other, other cloud services. Um, and they were phasing in the SaaS and OTBI support as well. So lots of moving parts, um, both with respect to leveraging their traditional, quote, legacy technology while adopting a lot of this cloud. 
And so the good news is that Flex Deploy, it, it really helped them get to the cloud faster and, and improve the ongoing quality, productivity, controls um, across the whole life cycle. So now they have an integrated platform um, and tool chain that's really streamlined their processes from end to end, you know, security, visibility, auditability, everything that they were looking for. And, and it, it addressed all that complexity uh, and the challenges. Um, so all of that right out of the box, given the, the heavy um, out of the box support for that whole set of technologies. Um, it's truly been transformational. Um, they are one ecstatic customer for sure. All right. So now into a, a demo. We're going to bring this to life with Flex Deploy and show you Oracle eBusiness Suite and uh, the SaaS Fusion applications. Okay, so what I have here is I'm bringing up Flex Deploy. Um, we're looking at some releases and, and we'll jump into a release that has um, a focus on eBusiness Suite. We'll start there and we'll do a, a, a uh, an overview of the capability. If we jump into what's called the Zulu Sprint, one of the releases, this is a, a release pipeline that's managing the changes that flow uh, iteratively across a series of stages, so test, QA, production, um, uh, that are defined, that, that ultimately flow things um, over the course of a day or a week um, into the production environment. And so the, the process is to define gates and steps for each stage that's going to govern and control how you flow the changes um, and then creating snapshots of the content so if we take a look at a snapshot here uh the latest snapshot that that we kicked off a little earlier um you'll see that these are oracle e-business suite customizations you'll see that there's anywhere from um AOL objects and publisher files and scripts and SQL. We'll look at the Glory 55, which is a what's called a project, um, and the associated packages um, and changes that are very common with Oracle eBusiness Suite. So in essence, these are the changes that the developers are making, um, and, and we're going to take and automate the build and deploy process and package those changes up and flow them across the, the different environments. Right. So if we just go back and look um, earlier this morning, um, we see that that there was a snapshot created. It made it into um, through the test environment into QA and, and failed an approval. It looks like somebody said, hey, we've got other changes we need to make. So let's just stop right there. OK, so in essence, we have a, a, a nicely controlled, streamlined process that will ensure that not only do we have the, the, the gates like test make me managing test results or an approval process or maybe a schedule but then we can automate the deployment of the changes execute different tests if we want to in an automated fashion and if you look at the qa stage you can inject manual interventions because not always is everything fully automated so you can model the the human intervention and tasks into the process and then last but not least there are other things you can do whether that be integration with the likes of ServiceNow, so managing that change request and the approval out of ServiceNow and having a nice uh, seamless integration between the products or doing things like sending emails or posting a Slack message or a Teams message, ways to better communicate um, you know, as you're moving through the process. Okay, so, so with that said, that's a release and a release pipeline. And what we're gonna see here is as we go to another part of Flex Deploy is we're jumping into what we call these projects. And, and packages in, in this H8, uh, XXHR project. What we have here is a series of, of, of packages, of changes that are related to Java and, and uh, PL SQL and various different customizations that, that are part of that release and the developers will be changing over time. So what you see here is that uh, it's a viewer over the top of the, um, the, the builds and deploys um, and tests as appropriate to be able to automate the process of being able to understand what those customizations are for eBusiness Suite, package them up in a build process and flow that um, and deploy that automatically into an environment. And we're gonna drill into this so you understand um, how this works in terms of automation and then how we very naturally give the visibility to things like you know, what's changing in source control, in this case, GitHub. How do we integrate with 
in this case, JIRA, or maybe Azure DevOps boards, that sort of thing. So we can do all of this um, at our um, automated and at our fingertips. So maybe what we can do here is I'll go ahead and kick off a change. Maybe I'm a developer, I'm working on this uh, particular file, and, and I wanna go ahead and edit that. And for simplicity, um, made a few changes here. I'm just gonna change a comment, go down here to the commit message, and you know we'll say one more change. I promise, only one more change, and we're gonna commit that. So I just committed this file right into the GitHub, and what we'll see if we go back into Flex Deploy is that it will automatically detect that this change was uh, committed and it will trigger a, a build process. So automatically make that uh, build process run. The developer can be off doing what they're doing to make them most productive. And we automatically via webhook kicked off that build and it's gonna package that up and create a new artifact from this Glory 55. Um, and it's going to store that in the artifact repository, okay? Um, and then, as a matter of fact, it's going to tie that to the release and create another snapshot of that of that Zulu release. But let's take a look at a, at what these packages are. Bring them to life a little bit. A package is a construct that ties to different types of changes. So whether we're talking in this particular case eBusiness Suite, or if we're talking Fusion applications or Salesforce for that matter, right? We need to go through here and manage this more effective. And so the complexity that we're talking about, the things that the, that the, uh, um, the, the, sur the survey respondents around the globe talked about in terms of, of, of legacy, uh, in terms of the complexity of change. And these are examples of that. So in this case, um, we've got Avery Dennison, where Avery and H&I are both using eBusiness Suite, Right, they're dealing with and managing the, the, the changes associated with things like uh, these, these, these different object types, database object types, AOLs, scripts, things that in e-business suite are very common and very challenging, right? So it's managing um, the ability to go off and automatically package up and deploy these changes and manage them as part of a release pipeline. So you can see that the build was, has completed, it's stored, the, the new artifact in the artifact repository. It tied it directly to my GitHub so I could jump into GitHub. I mean, if I just click on that, we can see the exact change that was made, highlights that for me very nicely. So a nice integration with, um, with Git or GitHub. And I can do the same in terms of tying it to my, my JIRA issue. We can see that the deploy occurred. Um, we drill into that to see the details if we wanted to. In most cases, you wouldn't come in here because it just works, right? But we now have the visibility, the traceability. We tie things to, uh, for example, the GitHub commit, the Glory um, 55 issue that's in JIRA, and we can see the details of what happened. So, for example, if this thing were to fail, I could look at the logs as a developer admin, and I could quickly get to the particular area um, and, and diagnose it, triage it, roll back a change if needed, so on and so forth. But the key is integration to streamline the process from end to end. Okay, so we have a summary, we have the, the steps, but we also have, have things like um, change logs. So the example here where here's my one more change, only one more change, and I could drill into that. I could see exactly what that was um, in this mode as well. And then, and then what I talk about for the artifact repository, here is that versioned artifact stored in the artifact repository. Here are the files that are associated with it. And as I alluded earlier, Flex Deploy is only gonna deploy what changed. So here is that one change that we made, committed that change, there's me, Dan, and, and that was successful. And while it skipped the others, because that's doing the smart deployment. So all of that sort of capability um, at your fingertips. Um, and, and, and really it comes because of the, the ability of Flex Deploy to provide the, call it the detailed engineering that knows all about eBusiness Suite. So for example, what I'm showing you here as, a, as a, uh, uh, an example of that um, detailed engineering behind some of these plugins, we can go to the deploy workflow. A workflow is a construct within Flex Deploy that basically takes advantage of 
what are called plugins. So if we filter on eBusiness Suite, we take a look at the eBusiness Suite plugin, you see that there's about 30 different operations for not only building and deploying eBusiness Suite, but doing many other things. So for example, if I just jump over here to these reusable workflows, we can see that in addition to doing deployment and automating that process, there are many other out-of-the-box capability. So now, you know, whether it was H&I, Avery Dennison, any of our customers using Flex Deploy for eBusiness Suite, they not only have the automation piece there for the build deploy, but Flex Deploy can, can determine, are there any invalid SQL statements? If there are, compile them. Don't get the developer or, or admin involved, just do it, right? Take that step, that manual step out of the equation. Similarly for this case where we had OA Core. Um, bounced automatically if Java was deployed. So that's the sort of thing that you can do and if you can just scan down this list, um, it's the heavy automation that comes out of the box because Flex Deploy knows the details of these technologies. I'll just show one more example. We're gonna get to this in a while, um, but the integration cloud. Uh, as long as we're here, look at the extensive capabilities for managing the details of the integration cloud. And you'll see this in, in action here in a bit. But that gives you some example of what um, you know of what Flex Deploy is and how it takes something like uh, a, a customization or a set of customizations from eBusiness Suite and allows you to automate the process of packaging up changes and and deploying them into an environment and also integrating the tool chain from end to end. Okay, and so so you know, with with that said. It's, very, it's also very important that we have capabilities that allow us to gain visibility to what's going on. So for example, here are some reports that you can tailor uh, and, and they do tailor. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, the customers, as a matter of fact, both Avery and um, H&I had significant challenges uh, of being able to go off and, and have a change process so they, they know exactly what was deployed, where, by whom, when, was there a problem, so on and so forth. So what you see here is a, an environment history report that tracks everything you know, across all environments, what was changed, who changed it, how did it tie to my source control, how did it tie to my service now, how did it tie to my JIRA, you know, those sorts of things. And we are able to do things like support our audits very, very quickly, right? To be able to deal with that complexity that exists, not just in terms of automating the, the, the packaging deployment of code and configurations, but of, of, of compliance and understanding what's where, right? Being able to manage that and prove that you truly have intellectual control um, and, and can prove it um, with things like this reporting capability. Okay, so so again, tying that right directly back to a couple of those customers, um, it was a big deal for them. Now, last but not least, as a matter of fact, if I just bring this up, I'll hit the show details. Um, I meant to show this, and, and in essence, what you have here is we just cracked open those, um, those those reports and went right down to the file level. Okay, so here's the exact PKB, LDT, right? so on and so forth that is associated with these Glory 55s and having it tied to the source control, including the revisions and all of the details that it needs um, to be able to manage and troubleshoot and audit more effectively. So with that said, another key element, and it's really the last thing that we're gonna show related to um, eBusiness Suite, and all of these apply to any of the technologies we're talking about. Okay, we're not gonna go back into each one of these as, as we bring up a few of the other, other examples, but just know that visibility is important, insight is important, and being able to understand you know, what's been taking place and trend it and track it and talk about the efficiencies we have in deployment duration, our, 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 our times where they need to be, are we trending down? How frequently are we making changes? What's the lead time to change? So this is an example of a dashboard that can be completely tailored and customized for individual roles or personas. Um, they can be shared across groups and teams. 
uh, really optimizing both the developer view of the world as well as the end-to-end -end life cycle and, and the value stream of managing change from end-to-end. -end. So you know that common theme across all of the three customers, right? That complexity that they had to be able to gain that insight because they were doing things manually, they're writing scripts, they're piecemealing the different tools together. It was impossible for them to get the insights like this. Um, and, and here it is out of the box, so you can take advantage of that. Okay, um, so that is the uh, quick rundown of, of the Oracle eBusiness Suite example and demo within Flex Deploy. Okay, and, and, and now we're going to jump over to the, the Fusion applications um, and, and take a look at that. So basically, all of the capability I showed you applies to the Fusion applications. Um, but the difference is that the Fusion applications are clearly a different uh, technology, right? Those SaaS applications, and we're dealing with the setup tasks, so on and so forth, and being able to automate that process similar to with eBusiness Suite, but do that for HCM in this case, or the ERP, or the SCM. So what we can see here is similar um, activities around building and packaging of changes, deploying them into an environment, tying them to, in this case, the Omega Sprint, that release um, that's associated with this. And then if we want to roll these together with eBusiness Suite changes or later with the integration um, cloud changes, um, you, can, you can package them up and group them into a release as you see fit, okay? Um, but let's take a look at the packages. So in this case, if we drill into one of these packages, we can we can see that HCM 125 um, specifically is managing a set of setup tasks. Okay, um, and, and in this case, if we look at the details, it's anywhere from from the value sets to the flex fields to the lookups. Um, the last one is managing the legal entity. So they're the details of the setups that are configured in an environment and need to be deployed consistently across environments. And so rather than doing that in a manual capacity, Flex Deploy has a plugin that knows the details of the SaaS solution, okay, and, and, and is able to do that. And we're not going to go through the details, but you would see that if we if we open this up, you would see uh, very similar to eBusiness Suite, where we have, uh, you know, the details associated with um, being able to package up and change uh, the the SaaS uh, HCM setups. So here's a summary, right? We in this case we haven't tied any tickets or anything else to that, but we have some reports that get generated right off the bat, right? We could look at the the the, the logs and, and you know identify any issues that were occurring and, and be notified of of that proactively, so we could triage, right? Maybe there were some tasks there aren't in this case or some change logs. That sort of thing would be populated automatically as part of the end-to-end -end process. Okay, so uh, very similar to eBusiness Suite, but in the context of managing this code and the configurations, mainly configurations associated with with uh, um, SaaS, the SaaS Fusion applications. All of that capability is there and right out of the box. Okay, and then um, we won't. We won't go there today, but the Oracle BI, the OTBI, the BI publisher, the same basic format to be able to automatically leverage those plugins um, and be able to, in that case, manage the web catalog objects um, and automate that from end to end. Okay, so with that said, you saw eBusiness Suite, a more complete, uh, if you will, overview of the of the solution to be able to automate the build and deploy process and roll things into release pipelines. Um, you can secure the end-to-end -end pipeline using role-based security, um, integration with your security stack, um, scans and verification testing, all of that can be nicely integrated into the end-to-end -end process. All right, so let's go back and look at one more example, and that is Heathrow. Heathrow uh, was working with a good partner of ours, Capgemini, as part of a very broad journey to the cloud. 
The difference was that they were retiring e-business suite, moving everything onto the SaaS solution. And in addition to leveraging the SaaS solution, they wanted to manage their infrastructure and the code and the configurations, right? They needed to be much more responsive to the business. Um, and that take, re took repeatability and speed uh, uh, and making sure that they could do things consistently. And very importantly, they wanted to integrate their tool chain. So in, in, in this particular case, an example is Azure and Azure Boards and, you know, and, and, and the Azure Git repository. Okay, so with that said, peeling it back and taking a look at their technology, we've discussed some of this already, um, and they had a lot of it. Okay, um, I mentioned the Azure DevOps Git, um, they use Key Vault, they also use boards, um, and, and then very importantly, um, they have the custom application built on Apex and the integration cloud. It was a great success, right? Heathrow just beautifully happy um, that they were able to go off and, and, and really empower the users, right? To, to drive the savings, right? To, to more effectively manage cloud infrastructure, turn it on and off when you're, when you're not using that and orchestrate that from flex deploy. You have a very nice automated and streamlined uh, development and delivery uh, life cycle. Uh, they, they, they cut back on the outages they were taking um, really limiting the impact to the business when they needed to take those as part of uh, environment refreshes. Um, and, you know, and, and, they, and they described it as, you know, faster, slicker, and quicker, right? They, they, you know, eliminate all that manual activity, get to the business value, right? Deal with those complexities that, that they talk to specifically, um, that, that we heard consistently um, as part of the, the, the Pulse QA survey. Um, and, and we're dealing with both leveraging and utilizing their existing investments in, in, in technology like Apex and the Oracle database while adopting the, the new technology. So yes, the, there's more complexity, but because Flex Deploy was there, they were able to, to manage that much more effectively. All right, so jumping back into uh, one more short demo. If we go up to the projects, You'll see that uh, I had favorited a, a lot of these because this is uh, what I'm working on here in the last few days. And if we jump into this project, this is all about Oracle integrations. So integrating their SaaS applications with their billing system built on Apex with other external and internal systems, they had a lot of integrations, right? They needed to tie those things together and um, had to deal with being able to manage those integrations and what are called connections and lookups and libraries, code and configurations that Oracle Integration Cloud needs to do its thing. All right. And so Flex Deploy has an out-of-the-box plugin um, that we could take a look at. Um, and I showed it briefly um, in, in an earlier demo where it can manage all of that um, change, automate the build deploy, start and stop servers, activate and deactivate integrations, you know, those sorts of things. Um, and so if we drill into this, similarly, you can see that um, in this case, we have um, the developers been making a lot of changes, right? Iteratively committing changes, and we could drill into those so they could see what that lineage is. Um, we could see what the steps are. We could drill into that and look at specifically what's going on with OIC. If there was an error, we could have configured it to be notified of that. Um, I don't know if there are any setup tasks here. It looks like there is an approval gate and a schedule that have been uh, approved um, by me, um, so on and so forth, right? So we now have the details associated with um, what has taken place in this case for a deployment of some of those changes. And then this particular um, change uh, could be rolled in with any number. So this demo 14 package, could be could be rolled in with um, the likes of other integrations. It could be rolled in with some e-business suite or SaaS applications into a release and managed from end to end. Okay. So um, with with that said, <clears throat> we have uh, back to the back to the presentation. The key, in a nutshell, is the outcomes. Right. That's what we're all here for. We're here to enable better outcomes. And so what we saw is 
because Avery, H&I, and Heathrow, they were all dealing with both legacy, if you will, and leveraging in a good way their invest investments in technology over the years, while also having um, adopting different parts of, of the cloud, right, in different um, ordering, if you will, and over time, they were dealing with the challenges um, and the complexity. And the good news is that across the board, they saw increase in, in capability and efficiency, improvements in quality, effectively managing costs more uh, better, right? The, the security of their release pipelines in the case of H&I, they were able to button those things up. Um, and then in general, drive that visibility, traceability, and reliability um, to their end-to-end -end delivery processes. All right, well, hopefully that gave you a sense for a few things. One is how we connect to the, the extensive um, and consistent challenges that enterprises face as it relates to you know, adopting more technology um, and the complexity thereof, of, of managing existing investments in legacy, um, and tying that into how our customers, the three examples um, in, in uh, Heathrow, Avery, and H&I, were able to solve those and achieve better outcomes. So um, appreciate all of your time. Um, please get a hold of us. Uh, if you want to learn more, um, schedule a demo. would love to be able to understand what you're challenged with and how FlexDeploy can help you address those challenges. Thank you. And with that, DZone would like to thank Dan for a great presentation. DZone would also like to thank Flexagon for providing our audience with an outstanding webinar. Lastly, thank you to everyone who viewed today's recording. We hope you learned something new that will help you in your developer career.